The lights of Las Vegas illuminate the largest cash prize of any competition, more than the Masters, Wimbledon, or Kentucky Derby. Shuffle up and deal! The greatest gamblers in the world have come to Sin City. Buying for poker immortality. <laughs> oh, and one other thing. Two and a half million dollars. Yeah! 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 This is the World Series of Poker. Downtown Las Vegas, Binion's Horseshoe Casino, where for the past 33 years, the world champion of poker has been decided. They were lined up early this morning for a chance to play in the biggest poker tournament in the world. The buy-in, 10,000 bucks. The top prize, well, you're looking at it, two and a half million dollars. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Las Vegas, Nevada, and Binion's Horseshoe Casino. I'm Lon McCarran, along with tournament player and sports columnist Norman Chad. Day one of this grueling five-day event reveals a record number of 839 entrants. And at our featured table today, we're very lucky to have two of the biggest names in the game, two-time champion Doyle Brunson and defending champion Robert Varconi, a nice contrast in style. Certainly. Doyle Brunson, old school. One of four men only to win back-to-back -back World Series titles. Considered one of the best poker players ever. Varconi was considered a fluke champion last year because no one had heard of him. Brunson pretty much puts the Texas in Texas Hold'em. He just looks like he invented the game. Varconi, on the other hand, is from Brooklyn, an MIT graduate with a more mathematical, scientific approach to poker. Should be a lot of fun. Nobody ever before has played for this amount of money in tournament play. And there is our featured table. Doyle Brunson, Texas Dolly, a living member of the Poker sure Hall of hand. Fame, is with us. And also, Robert Varconi. He is the defending champion. A single entry in this event already is in the top 10 money winning list. Two million for the win last year. And he starts off with two aces, Norman. When you're the world champion, aces seem to follow you. And he slow plays it. He's just going to call with the aces. Yoshi Nakano, 16 appearances here, so no stranger to how to play it. And a nice couple of cards, a king-queen. Very playable. Play long enough, you'll see it all. <laughs> well, Doyle's seen a lot, but he does not see anything he likes with his whole card, so he does fold. Patrick Parkinson from Ireland. A couple of sevens, that'll be good enough to keep him in the game. So, Robert, a strong favorite here with three-way action as we go to the flop. That number you see on the screen next to Robert Varconi's name is the percentage that they will have the best cards when the hand is done. You'll see it fluctuate as the cards come out. And Robert, interestingly, continuing to slow play the aces. He does not bet them. And Yoshi uh, bets with the thinking the pair of kings are best. Robert calls them. All right, the turn card is a five of diamonds. And Robert still a strong favorite in this hand. He again has checked the aces yet again. And Yoshi, again thinking he has the best hand, has bet 700 on his kings. Very unusually played here by Robert. Most would have been much more aggressive, maybe check raise to get more money. All he's been doing is checking and calling. Cool. And he does call again. So Varconi with a chance perhaps to take more money from his opponents, but playing it a bit quiet. The river is a two of clubs. Uh, only a king or a queen would have given Yoshi a winner. And uh, Robert Varconi now with the best cards here at the end of the hand. And the check mark right there indicates the best hand should all the players stay to the end. Varconi has checked again. He kept checking the aces throughout. Yoshi checks. So it's time to show Varconi. Puts down the two aces. Nakano knows he is beat. And defending mm. champion Robert Varconi opens up the table here with a nice $2,500 pot in our No Limit Texas Hold'em tournament. It's all going blind. We can make a pot, have some fun. <laughs> well, the amateur world champion doesn't want to be patient. He wants okay. to see some action. You call it, I'll do it. Doyle Brunson, well, he's got the patience. He kicks those cards away. They will come for him. He knows it. There's a good look at Tony Hartman. He is from Minneapolis, a 12-year World Series of Poker veteran. Taking a look. And a nice oh, ace-king combo. You got the ace-king. Yeah. You're going to play that every day and twice on Sunday. Three. He bets 100. 
So it's up to Robert Varcone. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Two <laughs> aces you know, again? Lon, yeah, Lon, they, they, they say that you're sleeping with angels when you're a lucky player in poker. Well, this guy sleeps with aces. <laughs> I mean, the odds against being dealt pocket aces are 221 to 1. The odds against getting him dealt twice in such a short period of time, I can't even multiply that high. <laughs> so Marconi with a 91% chance of winning this hand if they were all to stay in through to the end. Now this time he raises, last time we didn't see him raise the first hand, he's raised modestly to 325 and he is called by Tony Hartman. And there's the flop, king, okay. eight, three, and three diamonds on the board. And Varconi again checks, he, he plays these aces like they're diseased cards. Most would be aggressive there, he keeps checking. And Hartman got a king, so he's got two kings. He's got a pair of kings, and, and now he might be thinking, you know, maybe I got the best hand. We'll see what he wants to do with his kings. Hartman's going to bet, and what's going through his mind, I'm sure, is that he thinks no oh. way that Varconi's got two more bullets in his hand. Well, he thinks he's got the best hand with the kings. He made sure. a small bet with 100, and Varconi again, who could have raised them, just called. And another diamond on the turn, four now on the table. Oh, and again, unusual play here by Varconi. He's coming out and betting 1,000. He does not have the flush. He, he didn't bet the aces earlier when they were stronger. Now he's looking at a flush draw, and, and maybe he thinks if Hartman raises me, I know he's got a flush. Hartman might think he has the flush right now, Lon. Right now, it's up to Tony Hartman. A tough call for Tony Hartman. Oh, absolutely. Because he's got the top pair, but he's staring at four diamonds on the board, and it just if his opponent's got a diamond, he's drawing dead going into the river. I think he's given up the fact that trying to make Farconi believe he's got the diamond, though. He's going to call the bet. He called. That was a tough call. And on the river, it's a seven of heart. Each player has to think the other one's got a flush draw. Well, they neither one has the flush. Varconi has the best hand. I'll check. And he checks. The aces. <laughs> and he's induced Hartman to bet the inferior hand. Varconi immediately calls. And the cards come out. Robert Varconi again has aces. And what is Tony Hartman waiting for? Uh, sometimes you look again and think maybe the cards will change and I'll win. <laughs> they did not. And Varconi with a nice $5,000 pot. A great beginning for the man who had such an unbelievable ending last year. My name is Robert Varconi. And that's a V as in victory. I am the world champion. Robert Varconi, the new World Series of Poker Champion. The money is very helpful, especially when you're starting a family, you know, and I'm starting a family and unemployed. I used to be a computer guy on Wall Street, and this is my hobby, and I love it. It gives me great recreation, but, you know, I'm in a unique position because I'm not really part of the poker world. If he thought back, on the Queen 10 hand against Phil. Is that the self-proclaimed outsider does have some inside help, a poker coach. Meet J.P. Masser. He was one of the founders of the MIT Blackjack team that literally wrote the book on how to beat Vegas at 21. Now he's helping his fellow alum with a plan to repeat as world poker champion. If you will make that semi-bluff move against him, then, then he is actually correct to call. The idea here is for every possible situation that comes up, we attempt to jam into my memory a pre-programmed play. When you play blackjack professionally, you're, you're basically a robot. In poker, it's a lot different. I mean, you have to take in so many more factors. It's different people at the do table. You, do you think, you think it would throw people off if I went to the table and said, Rob Barconi 1.0, greetings humanoid, take me to your leader. <laughs> think that would throw them off? Uh, no. <laughs> they already think you're weird enough. <laughs> The list of entrants, 839 players long, the most ever here at Benyon's, and they have actually had to employ a downstairs poker room to hold the overflow. The main poker floor, also a sea of activity, but still we've got one empty seat that belongs to former champion Phil Helmuth. He likes to show up late on day one. He says to catch up on his sleep, but frankly, I think it's a little bit of chutzpah. He wants to show the opponents he can still win no matter when he comes. The hands of Phil Ivey, one of the great young superstars of poker. He has a great chance to become the first African American player to win the event. Uh, just a very intense and aggressive player who knows how to read other players, and he's equally difficult to read for the other player, so he's always a threat in tournament poker. Well, he got raised on this hand, and then he is out. Perhaps the next great one, not off to such a great start and not happy about it. And if you know anything about poker, you know this man. Johnny Chan immortalized in the 1998 poker movie Rounders as the perfect player. Yeah, but Lon, Matt Damon took him down to that one hand. <laughs> he did.
did indeed. In 1988, he became the last person to win back-to-back -to -back championships. And when you sit down with Johnny, you are at a disadvantage, even before the cards are dealt. I won. <laughs> Johnny has said I won more often in his life than virtually everybody else on this planet combined. Back at our feature table, Robert Varconi trying to join an elite group of four others to win back-to-back -back titles here. Robert Zimmerman, his first championship appearance. He's a rookie from Scottsdale. He's got a couple of sevens. Yeah, a pair of sevens, though, is a reasonable enough starting hand in, in Hold'em, and you're going to play him. Oh, not two aces for Robert, though. No, but he still doesn't leave home without an ace. <laughs> he's still got one ace, and this one he's going to bet. We, we didn't see him bet the aces earlier, but he comes out betting 600 here with the ace deuce suited. <laughs> up to Zimmerman to call, and he does indeed call. Zimmerman the favorite in the hand right now with the pair of sevens. There's the flop. It is jack 4-3 and two hearts. Now that does give uh, Varconi a straight draw. The ace can be high or low, so he's got one, two, three, four. A five gives him a straight, and he bets the ace deuce. $1,000 from Robert Varconi, and Zimmerman is going to call it with a pair of sevens. Robert Varconi very soft playing the aces, but he bets the ace deuce as if it's two jokers. No help to Varconi with that king of hearts, but it does give Zimmerman now a flush draw. Yeah, and Robert still would need a five for a straight, but the heart's the key card. And there it is, a flush for Zimmerman on the river. Okay. And neither player bets. And Robert Zimmerman turns over that flush, and much to the chagrin of the defending champion, he has been taken down by Robert Zimmerman. The game plan didn't work there. You can sense the frustration in Varconi's face. Also on Doyle Brunson, frustrated, yet to be a major factor at the table, but every poker player knows when Doyle's at the table, danger lurks. Doyle Brunson is one of the greatest players of all time. He is absolutely remarkable. At his age, he still plays good as any living human that I ever played poker with. And when Doyle is focused on a tournament, he can rise to the occasion. I can remember reading books about Doyle Brunson, and he's still doing it here in 2003. It's amazing. All the poker players know me. You're a legend, sir. No doubt about that in this town. Mostly because of the book that I wrote. Super System. That's what he's known for worldwide. The good part of it was it made good players out of uh, bad players. It made real good players out of mediocre players. The bad part of it was that uh, I revealed all my secrets. And all the professional players, they all read the book. And so I had to change the way I played. Such a mystique here at Minions. I mean, I get goosebumps when I would just walk into the place. I've been around for a long, for a long time. I'm uh, 69 years old, and I think I'm about as good as I ever was.